Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? going to do today we have made some modifications to our most recent beast drum 80 dose and i've discovered something uh quite cool in fact so what i've discovered is that <clears throat> i can using the standard output that I send everything to. So everything eventually goes to this output. Uh, everything. If you look at all the cables, all the audio cables from all of the audio sources, which I now have set up so that I can control and see the levels here um, as a, a number of uh, stereo levels, they just go to the output, running a little bit hot in terms of processing. Um, but you get the general idea. And basically what I'm doing is I have all of the audio cables routed to the output, but what I can do is I can add or delete, you know, however many you need, multiple outputs. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to then take those outputs and route them in your DAW to another input. And so I can't change these while I'm recording. But when I'm not recording, what you can see here is you can see inputs from the interface that you're using. So I'm using like a focus, right? And you can see inputs from that. You can also see inputs from a plugin. And so right now, as you can see, I have the inputs for all these audio channels and Pro Tools just set to, well, this first one's already set to record, you know, just whatever's coming out of my reactor channel, like normal. So output one and two, and that's the standard outputs, just one and two right here. Uh, and then I also have these other plugin inputs. So then I go to the input here, and I select plugin, then I select reactor, and I'm like, oh, I can input other shit from reactor. So what's that? So I can go reactor two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to eight. I'm only using seven. So that's why you see this number of outputs here on the out. And that's why I'm only using this many, because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so I don't actually need those extras. And that's where I'm at. Now I have the kick routed to input one. Kick one. I have kick two routed to input two. You can see these light up. I have a snare routed to input three. Uh, the hi hats going to input four. The toms going to input five. And then I have reverb and dirt on their own separate channels. And the reverb and dirt are still just coming out of a drum mix that, so all the drums are still going to a mix here that then mixes out and goes into my reverb compression chain or into my distortion chain. So that still happens. And that's where, you know, the, those channels are now going into basically these level outs so that I can control them, but also so that I can uh, just see the levels and make sure I'm not running too hot for recording purposes. So if I hit play, you see it all broken down. If, if I hit play, you see all of the channels broken down onto their own channel. So we have our two kicks, our snare, and I'm running kind of hot processor-wise, so I keep uh, keep overloading here. But you get the general gist, and that is um, that we can now, we can do recording 
you know, with multiple channels. Um, the main thing is kind of making sure you don't got too much going on. So just eyeballing the CPU meter every now and then. But, um, yeah, I can output these multiple channels into multiple channels inside of Pro Tools, and I can go ahead and record that. And that now results in broken down drums that I can then work with just from an audio perspective. So very, very cool stuff. I'm going to see if I can work around this CPU stuff as best I can. Just get some and just uh, get some stuff recorded. Um, yeah, you get the general gist. Um, so what you can do is you can set up multiple outputs inside of Reactor and then record those inside of Pro Tools. Exciting shit. So I think that about does it for today. Very quick episode. Until next time.